As a newcomer to Canada, getting accommodation is one of the first priorities that you need to have on your list when you decide to move to Canada. Unless you are one of the lucky few who have friends or family in Canada who are prepared to host you within the first couple of weeks that you are in Canada. During your first few weeks in Canada, having a permanent address is going to be very important because you will need it when you are filling documents to process things like your social insurance number, having a bank account and sometimes needing to have things sent to you. It will be a nightmare to jump on the next flight to Canada without having made concrete plans when it comes to accommodation. So in this video, I will share with you some advice and suggestions that I have when it comes to getting a house and some options that you can look into when you decide to now secure that accommodation. The first part we will look at is what kind of accommodations are available for you when you arrive in Canada. In terms of accommodation when you land in Canada, from my experience, I will put them into four different categories if you are looking into securing accommodation before or even after you've arrived in Canada. It is important to understand your situation and your current immigration status because that can affect your choice of accommodation depending on how long you are going to be in Canada. So whether you are a student, a work permit holder, or even a permanent resident moving to Canada, that can have an effect on your choice of accommodation and also the amount of money that you are prepared to spend might also come into play. Moreover, you might consider things like where you plan to work, where your school is located or even the kids that you are coming with, where the schools that they might be attending, where it is located, whether you live alone or you are moving here with your family. All those things might also come into play because security might be an issue for you and whether you are interested in securing accommodation just for a temporary period or even something that you can stick to for a long, long term. All those things might come into play when you are looking for accommodation. Because the truth is, knowing the one that best fits your situation will provide you the best experience during your stay in Canada. So the first group of accommodations that maybe you might focus on will be hotels or even Airbnbs. Hotels and Airbnbs are always a great choice if you are going to be in Canada just for a short time or even if you are moving here and you are having difficulty making a decision when it comes to a permanent place of residence because hotels and Airbnbs will permit you the comfortable temporary place of residence whilst you continue your search to look for your ideal place of residence but it is important to note that it can be very costly if you decide to stay in such a place for a long time because you'll be paying a nightly rate of between about 75 to 200 dollars a night and that can easily add up over a much longer period of time the next group of accommodations that you can look to especially if you're a student is either your student hostel or a student hall as a student you have the option of staying at your university's hostel or hall if you are an international student most of the universities that are in canada have the option of having student halls or accommodations or even hostels available to students who are interested in and most times even during summer breaks most of these university hostels or halls will allow you the option of just staying during the break so you don't have to move out compared to where we are coming from where during vacation students are forced to move out of the student accommodation so that it can be rented out to other people for other activities and with the student accommodation most times the schools will ask you to pay for it upfront so that you know your accommodation is taken care of throughout the academic year so you don't have to worry about that the third group of accommodation options that might be available to you is what i will call apartment rentals with apartment rentals there are two options that might be available to you you can have the option of renting an apartment on your own or you have the option of at least subletting from somebody who has already rented an apartment and in both cases they will require you to at least be paying your rent on a monthly basis there will be the option of having to make a security deposit and sometimes a damage deposit so that when you are leaving the apartment it will be given back to you if you don't mess anything up and with this option some landlords will ask you to at least commit to an extended period of time so be it three months six months or even 12 months some apartments can come fully furnished where all you do is you land and just walk into the apartment and others will come unfinished where you'll be required to now finish it yourself but you have to note that there will be a price difference when it comes to the two because one that's fully furnished might end up costing you more and the other one that's not fully furnished might be much lower because you will now need to buy things to finish it yourself the fourth category will be what i will call 
just sharing a house. This is an option where a group of people can come together and rent a single house and now share the rooms in the house among yourself. It might be a cost-effective way of living because now it gets cheaper with more people sharing. But the truth is you end up losing your privacy because all of you are now sharing the same amenities in the house. Even though you are saving costs, you don't have control over your privacy. And most times people might end up even subletting even the living rooms. But what I realized from my experience when I started looking for accommodation was most of these places will come with strict rules of when you can come into the a house, when you are supposed to leave, and when you can make noise, and when you cannot. Because there are a lot of people staying in such a place, they want to make sure that you don't infringe on somebody's rights. So now that you know the categories of accommodations that are available to you, that at least you can pick from, for you to find accommodation, there are a few th places that you can look at. For me, I advise that you can go onto the Facebook marketplace even before you at least arrive in Canada. You can change your location to the province that you are going to or even the city that you'll be landing in. Then you can now search on available accommodations that are there. Pick the ones that you like because people will be publishing available accommodations that they have, even ones that they are subletting. You just pick the ones that you like and you can just message the landlord or the person who posted that particular accommodation and communicate to that person. And if the person accepts you, you can now start discussing payment terms and all the conditions that come with that accommodation. And from my experience, after you've decided on the accommodation that you want from these categories, there are a few tips that you have to be aware of when it comes to accommodation in Canada. The first tip is to make sure that at least you can show your proof of funds or your source of funds to the landlords because most of the landlords would like to know how you plan to pay for your rent because the last thing they want to be doing is to be chasing you at the end of the month to get their rent. I had a shock of my life where most of the places that I went to I got turned down until one of the agents told me that they are not sure that you can afford the rent. So in the end, what I had to do was now go and print the proof of funds document that I had coming from Ghana, print my bank statement, and now send it to the agency to tell them that, oh, the accommodation that I'm interested in, I can actually afford it. And there's enough money to be able to at least pay for the rent once I'm in it, until they were able to approve me. My next step is to make sure that you have enough money on you to be able to afford at least six months of rent before you get to Canada. This is an advice that we give most people, but sometimes it falls on deaf ears. When you get to Canada, you will be surprised to know that the money that you are coming with might all disappear the first couple of months just into rent because any accommodation that you secure, they might ask you for security deposits. So that means if the accommodation is just even $600, within the first month, you are just spending about $1,800 because they are asking you for your first and last month rent and they are asking you for security deposits. That's like almost three months rent in one. At least having about six months of rent on you that can give you peace of mind even if you haven't landed a job yet so that you can now have a place to put your head once you start this Canadian journey and not have to worry about a place to sleep. My third tip would be always look for an all-inclusive rental. The all-inclusive rental option mainly comes with you are paying for just the rent and utilities all in one. So basically you don't have to worry about paying for utilities on a monthly basis. So the apartment amount, uh, rent that's been advertised will either include your rent, your utilities, when it comes to utilities, that is your hydro, your heating, and sometimes they will ask that it's coming with internet services. So you don't have to pay for all this. The good thing about that one is you pay for that one and everything else is taken care of. Because what will shock you will be, it comes winter and a heating bill will pop up, which will almost be half your rent that you haven't actually planned for. So always look out for an all-inclusive rental place. And my tip number four will be, if you can afford it, look into getting a renter's insurance for the place that you secure for yourself. The thing with renter's insurance is, if anything should happen to your belongings, being theft, fire, or anything of that sort, whilst you are in that particular apartment, they will basically reimburse you for the total cost of the thing that you lost. So it's a way to protect yourself. But you only do this if you can afford that rental insurance. If not, you can easily forgo this one. But if you can afford it, 
just look into at least securing a rental insurance for the apartments or the place that you'll be living in so these are a few things that i felt at least i should share with you when it comes to at least finding accommodation in canada as you said before you leave your home country or once you arrive here if you got value out of this video can you hit the like button so that youtube will see value in this video and share with other people and remember to share this video with family and friends at least who are on the journey of moving to canada and remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't just to join this family and let me know in the comment section if there's any video that you would love to see so that i can at least work on it and share with you guys so we all learn together until the next video cheers